Now this was better. Better. Perfect? No. Doesn't have to be perfect. It was better. Worthwhile. Actually got the blood flowing a little bit. Featured some characters that you should be featuring in ways that you should be featuring them. If that was the ultimate summary I could put on this week's Rampage, that would be it. Characters that you're supposed to care about being presented in ways that make you want to care about them. Okay. Matches that have some at least purpose or meaning. Okay. I'm cool with that. This was a solid hour of wrestling on Friday night. No question in my mind. All started with uh, Mr. Curtain Jerker himself, Brian Danielson versus Anthony Bowens from the Acclaimed. Uh, it used to be if you called somebody a curtain jerker, it'd be an insult. But not when you're Brian Danielson. Brian Danielson 2024. He's going to make sure, goddammit, that he's in the most watched segment of the show. Now, that's his jam now. The main event is the beginning. The beginning is the main event. That's the Brian Danielson way. And that Max Caster rap before, like, he spit some hot fire. Yeah. Who, who is the second greatest rapper? As Max Caster would say, Dylon, 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 Dylon. <laughs> he said, he, he made a Johnny Ace reference in his goddamn bars, goddamn him. That's still funny to think about how technically, 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 Johnny Ace is Brian Danielson's father-in-law. <laughs> But Anthony Bowens is a decent talent that sometimes I think is getting a little swept under the rug here a little bit. He's a good talent. It was a solid match. Of course, Brian Danielson's going to look strong. I mean, what, are you going to have him do lose here? Give me a fucking break. Brian Danielson, don't do that, brother. <laughs> but solid match, solid start. The, the Johnny Ace reference alone for Max Caster certainly popped me. But it was a good setup to... Uh, Mr. Rampage's segment, and that's CM Punk, where he's coming out and he's demanding an answer and an apology for Eddie Kingston for what happened last week. And out comes Eddie Kingston. When it took a couple of minutes to get going, it did. Holy hell, son of a bitch. Once it got going, it got going. To any of you that have been talking about this entire time since CM Punk has come back to wrestling and come to AEW, that you've been enjoying this happy-go-lucky. All shucks, just happy to be here, CM Punk. I hope you have buried that stupidity once and all for all for fucking ever. This, this is the type of crap you should be doing with CM Punk. This, this is what he can bring to the table. This, this is the type of shit that your company badly, desperately needs. Not in terms of they don't get it to go out of business, in terms of you want to stop any losses in terms of viewership and you want to grow your audience. This is the type of shit that produces the compelling, interesting television. It's basically like you told CM Punk and Eddie Kingston, you have less than 10 minutes to go out there and sell this pay-per-view and sell your match on the pay-per-view and they fucking nailed it out of the park. Now, sometimes it can be easy, lazy to go down the work shoot path, but God damn it, sometimes if you do it and it works, man, does it add an element of realism. Does it add an element to, I don't need to suspend my fucking disbelief here because I can believe that. This was fantastic. Like, you want to see CM Punk and Eddie Kingston now at the pay-per-view at Full Gear next Saturday. You want to see these two guys get it on. This is promo segment. Like, yes, yes, a million goddamn times, yes. Very happy-go-lucky CM Punk into the fucking dumpster of stupidity to never come back again. This is the type of guy that you've been needing to see. This is the type of CM Punk that I've been waiting to see, that I've been wanting to see. And do you see how much better it is when he does this? If he didn't just come out and cut another happy-go-lucky or I'm an all shucks AEW guy promo, like, fuck that. It wouldn't have done anything. This right here, though... Like Eddie Kingston himself already has this tremendous ability to make things feel real. He absolutely does. And he does it in a magnificent way. Like, he just has that presence about him. That he can draw you in. There's a genuineness, a reality there that a lot of wrestlers try to portray. The difference is that Eddie Kingston doesn't have to try to portray. 
It is who he is. Take it or leave it, like it or fucking don't. And then CM Punk being who CM Punk is, you know that when he's in a rhythm, he can throw down on the mic like few others. The chemistry between these two, the dynamic between these two on the mic was great. It was fantastic. And this segment was fucking awesome. Like if this literally would have been it and just the mic stuff alone, I'd have been like, this is an A plus segment. But then you get like the pull apart brawl where they're each trying to go after each other and they kept coming. Like, fuck yes. If AEW wants to put out the best type of wrestling product they possibly can, it's a little less of the flippy, no-selling, everybody 50-50 booking bullshit matches, and it's more shit like this. This is why you pay a big money to a CM Punk. This is the type of shit that you do with the CM Punk. This is the type of way that you utilize an Eddie Kingston. How good will their match actually be at full gear? I don't know. But goddamn... You talk about selling it in that one segment. They did. They absolutely fucking did. And I loved every damn minute of it. I will also give a shout out here too in this opening round TBS tournament women's match. The Bunny versus Red Velvet. I like the touch of the fact that Red Velvet didn't come out smiling. She didn't come out taking her sweet ass, sexy ass, fucking two beautiful cakes having ass time. She came bolting down the ramp like a bat out of hell because she was pissed at fucking Bunny for what had happened before. It's like, oh my God, that's exactly how you would realistically expect somebody to behave. You're not going to expect them, hey, they fucking jumped me. I see him again. I'm going to be happy and laughing and joking and high-fiving and doing all that other shit. You know, basically the WWE bullshit. No. She came barreling like a bat out of hell and she wanted to beat that ugly white heifer's ass. Yeah. Again, those small things, but you can buy into them. You can believe them. They make sense. It makes no sense why I'm not the manager for Jade Cardone. It's just a personal thing. Oh, weak. I really wish Jade would have come into the ring afterwards and give her red velvet a good spanking. Like smash those cakes. Hey, you don't like what I say, people? I don't give a shit! It's not for you! It's for Jack. But I guess we'll see Red Velvet and Jade next time around. And, oh. Exciting stuff. All right. Main event. Adam Cole versus John Silver. And Mark Henry has not been utilized very well by AEW. This is an awkward spot they put him in. But at least I'll say this. The And now it's time for the main event. Even that shit has gotten over. Why? Because it's Mark motherfucking Henry. Guess what? Mark Henry knows how to get shit over. But I give props to John Silver, man. You know, he's not a main event type of talent. But he's absolutely a talent you want to have in the fold. A guy that could be an entertainer. A guy that can act. A guy that could be a character. A guy that could be a personality. A guy that the fans could relate to. Like a Crash Holly type of guy. You know, those types of guys matter. Not everybody can be a main eventer. Not everybody needs to be a main eventer. Not everybody should be a main eventer. But sometimes those mid-card and underneath-card guys can absolutely still be stars. And when you talk about a guy who does a lot, I think, with the camera time that he's given, the ring time that he's given, to make the most out of it, maximize his time, and actually get himself over, I give props to John Silver. I think he does. He absolutely does. He's won me over and the back and forth between him and Adam Cole was pretty good. You know, as far as this match goes, like it shouldn't have been a 30-minute classic, and it wasn't. Like John got some shit in, but at the end of the day, you got to protect Adam Cole, baby. And at least, again, somebody named Tony Khan learned the fucking lesson. Like, if you do nothing else with Adam Cole when you have him on TV, the one goddamn thing you make sure you do is you don't be a dumbass. You show his fucking entrance every time. You got multiple points in that entrance where the crowd interacts in a massive way. Why in the hell at any point in time you wouldn't have shown that on TV? Like, that's the type of shit that a Tony Khan needs to be called out for. And yet so many fans don't. They're so bought into the bullshit. But, solid imagine, like I said, I enjoyed Rampage overall this week. I really did. The matches that were on there worked. 
The segment with CM Punk and Eddie Kingston, I thought once it got to the point, was absolutely fucking fantastic, like tore the house down type of stuff. That's the type of stuff you need to see more. I'm not sure what the viewership numbers will be or anything like that, but you keep putting out shows like this every week, and you'll see an increase in viewership in due time. Because this shit, this week, Rampage, was really good. 